Welcome, my name is Tashara and this is Starmates. In today's episode we're actually going to build a new ship. So I've got my core ready and uh, yeah, let's start building. Uh, you may ask what type of ship we're going to build. Well, it's going to be a space brick. And here we go, one of fine looking space brick. I think I made a decent amount of progress. I can call this ship done now. So uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. I was only joking, of course. I am actually going to build a uh, proper ship, not uh, a box like that. But what I wasn't joking about, this ship is going to be a space brick. So don't expect any sleek curves uh, in the, uh, the body of the ship itself. Uh, it's going to be kind of squarish. So yeah, uh, be warned about that. Uh, so I started with this cockpit design. I quite liked uh, having these, uh, these angles at the front, uh, giving you a very good view from the cockpit itself. So we've got our core here. So let me look out and we have a few, uh, well, basically all sides. Uh, but we have a very good uh, overview of all the, uh, the angles if the ship is going to land. Because that's one of the main goals I have for this particular ship design. It's going to be a ship designed to land on a planet and uh, drop a whole lot of cargo in one go. So I've got a bit more of the front of the ship uh, going now. As you can see here, it uh, is the patented white armor on top of the gray that I'm using for this uh, ship design. I uh, always quite like to use that. And I already started with docked entities because this window here, or multiple windows actually within the cockpit design, are docked entities. Otherwise you can't really get the uh, angle in there. But uh, yeah, I've got plenty of space to, uh, to dock stuff here at the front, so uh, that shouldn't be uh, interfering with any of the interior that's going to be designed later on, um, so that should work out. Um, yeah, this is basically the front end of the boxy design I'm going for for this ship, uh, so it also uh, determines how big the ship is going to be. So it's uh, basically uh, determining the scale of what the ship is, is, uh, is going to be. So let's uh, build up some more of the uh, main body of the ship and see where it goes. So here we are. I made some small changes, built a bit of the main body over here and added some detailing on the side. Uh, so for example, we've got some trust array here and this part here is, I think, a very good place to add some uh, sort of uh, landing gear so we can uh, have some uh, some sort of docked entity uh, move down uh, for a yeah some sort of landing gear foot um, and over here I started uh, basically experimenting with the main cargo bay doors that I want to have on the side of the ship uh, so it's going to be a rotating door uh, that allows for rapid uh, yeah cargo deployment so to speak. Um, so that's what I'm, uh, I'm planning to do on this side. Okay, slight change of plans. I decided to add these uh, docked engine pods to the side instead of so uh, the thruster detail I had before. Uh, because I quite like the idea of having factor thrust on this particular ship. And then they can move down if it's going to into the landing sequence to, uh, to land on a planet or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's quite... Uh, Quite like uh, that ID. I uh, also built a bit more of the main body over here and experimented with the uh, door design I have on the side here. So uh, it's not really uh, wired up correctly yet, but I do have the buttons over here to experiment with the movement of the door itself. So as you can see here, it moves out uh, at a 90 degree angle and gives us a lot of space for moving in and out cargo. So that uh, should work out quite uh, like I imagined it. So uh, yeah, just a bit of, uh, of detail adding to the door itself, I think, because it's a bit plain now at, uh, at the moment. But uh, as far as functionality goes, I think that's what I'm going for. As you can see here, I started experimenting a bit with the uh, landing feet for the ship. 
So I've got uh, one on each side on the front of the ship. So now I need to add uh, some more on the back and perhaps in some other places to uh, really support the vessel itself. Uh, also added a bit to the armor on the back. So now you can see how big the ship is actually going to be. And like I said, it is going to be a space brick, so it's it's quite square. Uh, although I do have, of course, the, uh, the detailing going for it and uh, some of the other shaping that I'm going to add to the hull. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a flying box, basically. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be uh, a streamlined uh, type of ship. I uh, also started working a bit more on the mechanics I wanted for the door. Um, and perhaps you can see what I'm going for on the inside already. Uh, so let's open the door again. So you open the door like this, and then the idea is to have this move out. And we can do that over here. So this is going to be basically a uh, elevator type thing that can move the cargo from in the cargo hold over here uh, to outside and then drop it down to the ground. And of course, uh, the other way around as well to, uh, to take in cargo if, uh, if needed. And with some additional detailing, this door looks quite a lot better than it was before, not as plain. And I did some additional work on the logic for this elevator system I've got going on here. So I wired it up now to this button over here. So if you press it, then the door opens. And then as you can see, the contraption over here goes to the outside and then lowers the elevator to ground level. So uh, yeah, this is basically a very big cargo elevator that's uh, sliding in and out of the cargo bay like this. And we're going to have that on both sides, of course. And if you press the button again, then it basically reverses the process, takes up the cargo, then slides it back into the cargo bay, and then closes the door like this. So yeah, rapid deployment of cargo to a planet service. That's the purpose of this ship. Things look a bit more balanced now. I've got uh, both doors in now on both sides. I also started experimenting with rotating the uh, engine pods like this. So this is their landing sequence. So I basically have the uh, landing uh, uh, shots extended like this and the engine pods moving downward. And I'll probably have to add two more on the back to balance things out. Um, also added the mechanism for the second cargo elevator on this side of the ship. So I wired it onto a similar button like this. So this also works correctly now by deploying cargo like this to uh, the surface of a planet. So we can uh, have both sides extended now. As you can see here, it quite changes the look of the ship itself <laughs> if uh, it is in this deployment stage. I uh, quite like how that uh, transforms uh, the ship. But yeah, this is the, uh, the main gimmick of the ship having these cargo elevators uh, extend like that. Did some work on the interior of the ship, uh, and you might be wondering what this is all about. This is a elevator, and you might be asking, what is this elevator for? Well, it's for a new element I put on the ship. <laughs> this thing, to be precise. This is a landing pad I put on top of the ship hull itself, and then the elevator over here is uh, what can be used to uh, basically access this. And uh, got this little ramp that basically allows uh, this whole section to be flat so you don't have anything sticking out. Um, because this dropship, or whatever you want to call it, uh, cargo dropship, is going to be used in a backup project. And I haven't talked about that yet in this episode. Um, because this is basically going to be a subcraft of a larger build. And I want this ship. To be as compact as possible as far as shape is concerned so that is why it's going to be a box um, it's going to be packed tightly with multiple of these ship types uh, together uh, and it's probably probably going to be docked at the top of the uh, the ship itself so i want a flat surface on that end um, but i did want some part of interest on uh, this side of the ship so i decided to add a well, small docking bay, so to speak, docking pad, 
uh, that's for example a working beacon land on when this ship is deployed to a uh, planet surface it can also be used as a temporary uh, docking bay or base uh, for yeah, small subcraft, so to speak. Also added the entities at the back. So now it's in the landing configuration uh, for both set of engines, as you can see here, but I still need to work on the uh, on the side of the, uh, the hull. Uh, also started some shaping on the back of the ship. Uh, wanted to do something with angles as well and started to work out what I wanted to do with additional engines and uh, a airlock system over here. Uh, so that's still a work in progress. But yeah, this is going to be the size of the ship itself. It's not going to be any bigger than this. This is a quick example of what I meant with the landing pad. So I've got my rocker bee here that you have seen many, many times if you follow any of my other videos. Um, and it can bend here on this landing pad. I uh, added these slides as well, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them. I think they're a bit too noticeable for the entirety of the ship. Uh, to have them there, but uh, I'll experiment it with that a bit more. Also did uh, some small tweaking for this elevator system, so I added a docked entity for our door now, so if the elevator comes up it uh, opens like that, instead of the, uh, the black door I had before, because you can open that by hand of course, so if you go here and you press this button, you could open this door by hand, but it was a black door, and uh, yeah, fall down basically. So I wanted to prevent that. Um, yeah, this is uh, now in the flight uh, mode. So the engine pods are now rotated backwards. So this is probably going to be the regular uh, configuration when it's docked to my bigger project. Um, but it can swing down when it is, uh, of course, uh, going to land on the planet or something like that. Uh, also, experiment a bit with what I want to do in bottom section of this ship, um, having some sort of central thrustor array, I think, in the middle of the ship, uh, just to give it enough thrust capacity for uh, landing within gravity wells. The ship did get a bit larger, not by much, but a bit. I extended this back section of the armor uh, for two blocks, so I can uh, have a similar section here for the back uh, landing uh, gear. That I have in front here as well. Um, and I started experimenting a bit with the thrust array at the back of the ship, but I'm not that happy with this current setup at the moment, so I'm going to change that. I put on some rudimentary walls on the main uh, cargo section of the ship here, so this uh, room is uh, pretty much defined. Uh, didn't do much with the ceiling yet, uh, but I did put in the wall at the back end of here as well and did some detailing for the cargo lift uh, stations. Also added this uh, uh, forklift. I uh, already uh, built that before, so it's basically a copy paste job from the Samson, uh, a challenge build I, I did a while back. Uh, so this will basically be the main cargo hold uh, as of now on. I still need to work on uh, some of the systems and this uh, section over here for the airlock. And I changed some of the uh, uh, engine arrays here to resemble the um, rotating engines on this end as well. So as you can see here, I uh, set back this engine a bit more than the one at the top. So we get this line uh, in line, at least with the armor plating for this angle. I quite like this setup now. So uh, just need to add some of the uh, detailing for the airlock itself. And then the back end of the ship should be more or less done as well. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on the bottom section as well, just to close it up a bit, uh, adding some of the shaping and adding a button on the outside. So we can now press this button as well, but then extend the, uh, the cargo elevators uh, this way. And of course, reject it uh, when it is uh, no longer needed. And here we go. Now we've got the detailing for the back in order. So now we've got uh, some docked Airlock doors on both sides, and you still need to do some detailing internally here. But uh, yeah, this is basically the interior of the ship now. Airlock into the cargo bay, uh, then into a plain wall, because I still need to get some detailing here as well. And then into a small hallway all the way to the cockpit. So um, 
yeah, not a lot of variation in interior rooms, but uh, yeah, it's basically a good amount of interior space of this ship that has interior. And of course, the main feature is still the cargo bay itself. Also did some work on the underside for this central thruster array I wanted and added the uh, landing shots at the back here and then some additional landing shots here in the middle. So uh, giving it a good foundation to, uh, to have a stable uh, uh, footing on a planet. But yeah, the ship is almost done. We're at the home stretch, I think. Just some of the final detailing and then I think we are done with the ship. And there we go. Not a lot of difference on the outside. A uh, couple of armor panels that have been changed quite uh, subtly uh, with some lines, some additional detailing here and there. But yeah, the ship is, uh, is more or less done. At least I don't uh, think I have anything more to add to it. Um, I will give you a brief tour of the interior because there's some nice interactive features. So let's go here. This is, of course, the cockpit. Um, we have our landing gear uh, toggleable over here. So if you press this one, I can show you. It now rotates the engines to the bottom side and then extends the landing feet over here in the middle and in the back. So it's uh, quite a nice stable footing, I think, for this ship. And then over here, we have a small control room for our docking at the back. And you might be asking, this is docking for yeah, redocking or uh, undocking from something? Well, no. If you uh, press this button, you can see here the uh, numbers at the bottom change. And this corresponds with the docking itself. Let me show you. As you can see here, normal docking bay, 5 by 3 if I press this button, that's a 3x3 three three docking ray. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, added these two uh, docked entities to the side so you can uh, move them uh, inward. So if you have a standard 3x3 three three docking, then we can still have a perfect seal for a 3x3 three three size. And if you want to go back to the 5x3, uh, we just press this button again and then it's the 5x3 it is originally designed for. So that's a, uh, a nice feature, I think, for uh, additional uh, interactivity for the ship. But let's continue. We have our doors here. We can open them. And then we can come here in the cargo area. And of course, the uh, uh, control panels for the cargo elevators. And these cargo elevators now have freight in them. So we've got a couple of machines and some cargo boxes over here and some additional freight over here that is uh, ready for deployment. And if you press the button, we will, of course, deploy the uh, cargo elevator. And then it will move down like this. As you can see here, ready to deploy the cargo to a planet service. And uh, also added some additional detailing to the walls over here. And I think already showed this end of the cargo bay, but it's all nice and detailed, including the ceiling. And we have our elevator over here we can use to go up to the docking pad. Here we go. So now we have access to our subcraft if there are landed here. For example, the worker bee I showed earlier. Let's go down again. And then all the way at the back. Over here, we have, of course, our door to the airlock. Nice and deep little as well. It's now uh, blue. And basically, if you press this button, it will close the uh, door on this end and then open this door. Uh, notice that. And then you can exit to whatever station or ship you're docked to. So yeah, that's uh, basically the interior of the ship itself. Um, like I said, the function of the ship is deploying these large cargo elevators and deploying cargo in a rapid fashion to a planetary service. Um, let me show you a bit about the systems. It's not a whole lot of uh, things that are added to it because it's not a, uh, uh, a ship with, uh, with weapons, of course. But I did add some modules to the reactor. 
some scanner strength, uh, of course the standard uh, jump drive uh, extensions. I did add a shield outage redux to it, so it's got a very fast acting shield, and I added the anti gravity. Uh, because, like I said, this is a ship meant to deploy cargo to a planet, so anti-gravity was one of the main features I, uh, I think was appropriate to add to this ship. But uh, yeah, I think I can call this build done. Hope you enjoyed it, even if it was a flying space brick I was building today. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.